Hey guys, how's it going? We're nearing the end of April, and so we wanted to give you a quick tour of some of the really pretty blooms in our garden right now. It's not gonna be a complete garden tour. I'm not gonna walk you all over the place. We're just gonna kind of stop in a few key areas that I think are really pretty right now. And then we're gonna give you a tour of our vegetable garden because the fence is done. Uh, the whole area isn't quite done yet, but the fence is, and it's starting to look really, really nice. I think you guys are gonna love it. So I wanted to start right here because this is one of my favorite spots in the entire yard right now. You guys know, these labella pock tulips are looking absolutely stunning. There are 300 of them in here. That's how many I planted anyway. I don't know exactly how many came up, but it looks like a 300 to me. There's a ton. I just love the height of them. I feel like I could plant even a taller variety back behind them. Erin and I were just talking about that today, like drifting some taller ones in there. Um, I also did plant some daffodils and tulips in containers in a video earlier on this spring. These are called peach cobbler. And those poor things have been through a really stiff couple of windstorms, um, and they kind of were flopping a little bit, but they're rebounding and looking okay. A Korean spice viburnum right there. It's absolutely massive. I don't even know how tall that is, but it goes all the way up into the locust tree in full bloom, and its fragrance is just, if you guys have ever smelled it, it's just, it's kind of a nostalgic smell to me. My parents have one, and it's a beautiful, beautiful shrub. If you look through that little alleyway, kind of the little tunnel, you can see the blushing princess alyssum. And I want that to just be this kind of sparkly looking river through there this summer. I'm really looking forward to it. And I think it'll do well. It's a sun loving annual. It gets afternoon sun here and the other side gets morning sun. So we'll see how the growth pattern differs if it does at all. Um, if we move for further this way, you can see the Mavada tulips right here. There are some in the ground are right around this really sweet aronia. This is a low skate mound aronia right here. And then I have some in a container as well. These are some I planted in the same video along with the daffodils. Don't you just love that bicolor? This is a little bit different for me. I usually don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I choose things that have multiple colors, but these are very distinct. I usually choose something that's a little bit more muted, but I'm really enjoying these and I picked these on purpose because I think that the colors go really well together. The labels and this pink here really blend nicely. And then we're still enjoying our Scent and Sensibility pink lilac in the container. Still doing great. Also smells really good. Um, and then right across the pathway here are more peach cobbler uh, daffodils. Now these look a little bit different than the ones in the pot. I wonder if I mislabeled those. <laughs> It's quite possible that I mislabeled and these aren't quite as yellow, but these are a little bit older, I think. No, I don't know. I'll try to see if I can find if that is actually what those are. Next up, we'll go look at a red bud that's looking absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. That is probably one of the most stunning pictures in the garden right now. I think the way that it kind of goes over our fireplace area on the right here, and then over the bench with the lemon coral sedum and the urns. It just frames everything in beautifully. And I love multi-trunked trees, love them. This one obviously was here when we bought the house and I'm so thankful to whoever planted this tree because I really, really enjoy it. It seems to enjoy this spot. Next up, I wanted to show you back behind the potting shed because we did do a makeover video there last year and I think it's looking pretty good. There's all the autumn frost hostas that we just planted. They're doing really well. Oh, while we're at it, all my strawberries are still thriving and they're actually producing. Look at this. We've got little babies on here. More up here. It's exciting. We do have these hooked up on drip. Erin hooked these up for me um, so that they're watered. I think right now they're getting water every other day and they're doing great. There aren't a whole lot of blooms in here. And in fact, this area is like kind of a baby area. We just made it over last year. So all the plants are pretty small, but I'm really thrilled with how they came through the winter. So I just wanted to show you guys Primo Wild Rose Hookera in the front. Beautiful color. They're mounding already. Cannot wait. I mean, they get pretty good size. I can't wait till they put on more size. This is a White Wands Veronica right here. So I have kind of a drift going on back here and these will fill in really pretty white spiky flowers. But on the right hand side here, there are some purple prince tulips that I think are absolutely perfection with this hookera. The color is just perfect. So I'd love to get my hands on a bunch of these tulips and just mass plant this area. I think it'd be so pretty. 
And then of course the basket of gold sedum, wonderful perennial, super tough, blooms in the spring, but it does have really kind of sagey green blue foliage that I really like through the season. So that's looking really good. And then we are gonna be developing this area probably this year. So that'll be a kind of a fun transformation. So now let's head to the area where our new fountain is. So this area probably looks a little bit different than it did when we installed the fountain initially. The boxwoods have been trimmed. Everything looks tidy and neat for spring and that makes my heart happy. Uh, but this middle section is absolutely packed full of gara that will come up in the summer. So it'll be very um, overflowing and abundant and not as structured. I really like that. I like when there's something structured in the front or anywhere really in the bed, but then there's something more free and untamed um, next to it. It's kind of that juxtaposition. And I think every area really needs to have some element of structure so that it's not like, ah, you know, like not too much stuff going on. It kind of grounds the area. Of course, I like probably a little bit more structure than maybe some of you guys do. I could have boxwood hedges everywhere and just love it. Um, but the tulips in this area are coming up and they are beautiful. Is Russell in there? Yes. He follows us around. Really pretty blend of pale pink, apricot, and white tulips. I think that these came in a pack. Um, the previous owner planted these, and I think he bought them down at the garden center where I work. Um, and I remember us having packs of these, this blend, and I'd love to get more of these as well to pack this area out. But this um, fountain is called the Grand Kensington Three-Tier Fountain from Henry Studio. And this sound is wonderful. Don't you guys love it? Okay, let's head toward the Versailles Garden. So this is the first tree I wanted to show you guys. This is a Royal Raindrops crab apple. When I did the tree tour earlier on, it was not in bloom, it was just budded up. Um, and the blooms have been on, open on the tree for quite a number of days, so they are getting a little bit aged, but they are beautiful still. So you can see right here, this one is a little bit fresher. That's kind of what they look like when they initially open. Kind of a deep pink, and then they fade out to kind of a light pink. But this tree is absolutely loaded. Really, really happy with it. I cannot wait for it to have some size. Okay, the other areas, there's like three of them over here I wanna show you. Right here around this urn, we planted 90 Cafe Noir tulips, which have turned into more than that. <laughs> like each, each bulb that I planted, I think last year maybe there was two blooms that came up or something like that. And now there's four or five in every single bunch. So they're starting to naturalize which is amazing uh, because I wanted to plant more than 90 bulbs just because this is a pretty good size area. Um, they don't stretch as far as you think they would, but I didn't need to clearly because they're just doing so well. Russell, what are you doing? Boxwoods are doing great. They have at least doubled in size since we planted them. The Russian sage, it's denim and laces. The variety is coming back from the winter, looking good. And then right to my right, we don't need to get close because you can see the color from here. Those are the pansies I planted last fall. We're still enjoying them right now. I've never watered them or fertilized them one time this spring. And that's how they look. I wish that everything would behave that way in my garden. Erin just informed me that the pansies actually get sprinkler water, so I take that back. I haven't fertilized them, but they have been watered. <laughs> okay, so this is a pink flowering dogwood. I also showed you this in the tree tour. The uh, blooms were just starting to open, so they weren't fully colored. But look, let's see which one's easiest to pull down. Look at the blooms on this thing. They are just so pretty. And I love, so this is in the entryway of our house. I love when we drive in, I can see this dogwood and then I can look through Versailles Garden and I can see that crab apple blooming. So I just imagine to myself what this place will look like in 10 or 15 years just with these two trees. And that's kind of something to think about for your own yard. Like, what could you add that will add, I mean, just so much, I, I get so much pleasure out of looking at even these baby trees, but think about how much you'll thank yourself in years down the road if you even put in one tree that's pretty in your yard. I just draw so much enjoyment from it myself. I don't know, I think everybody needs to plant all the trees. And then there's a gorgeous crab apple up here. This crab apple is probably one of the prettiest ones I have ever seen. And I don't know if it's just the setting for me. I mean, it, the tree is absolutely stunning. It's just dripping in white blooms. And I don't know what variety this is, you guys. I wish I did. Um, it is definitely upright, but it has a weeping habit a little bit. We do have to trim up some branches here and there. But I think the whole thing with the fence section, and then there is a Hebe fountain right there, which still isn't running. 
but I think the whole thing is just so beautiful and the honeybees absolutely love this tree and so walking by it during the day when it's warmer out I can hear it just buzzing with activity and I like that I liked that my garden has stuff that's attracting the bees let's take a look at it from the front side yeah check this view out you can really see the blooms they're a lot brighter on this side of course the sun's going down so it is a little weird guys I hope it's looking good um, I'm noticing underneath that my perennial game isn't super strong underneath. I haven't done a whole lot in this area and there are red tulips I still need to take out. Um, I need to get some red foliage underneath there because uh, I think that there needs to be more contrast, but that's something that I'm going to be working on this year. Um, I'd also like to, I'll probably leave the yellow tulips, but I'd like to bring a little bit more spring color down um, so there's a little bit more interest underneath, but you know, all future plans and fun stuff. Okay, so I think that that's all I really wanted to show you guys today. There are other things blooming, of course, but those are like the most spectacular. So now we're gonna head toward the vegetable garden and show you what's going on there. Can you guys see it? Do you love it? I adore this fence. I think it turned out so great. I'm so happy with the, the spacing of the slats, the color. Um, and those are all decisions that I had to make along the way. And I'm not great at making decisions, especially when it comes to something that is gonna be a very visible part of my garden. Like I had to decide what angle I wanted these cut, um, the opacity of the stain. This is not a paint, this is actually a wood stain that we used. There were three different levels of stain. This, the stain came from Home Depot. There was one that was really um, like almost a paint. There was one that was really transparent and one kind of in the middle and I chose the middle one. I'm really happy that I did because I think it's pretty. I also had to decide how many inches I wanted the post to be up all kinds of things and I just think everything turned out so wonderfully. Now there is areas like this because the land does slope down that there are bigger gaps on the bottom and that's totally fine because we're going to be cutting grass out all along this whole area on both sides and I'm going to start planting. So there'll be things that will be growing right here totally blocking the gaps here. These arborvitas, these are north poles. These grow three to five feet so they should create a green wall back here. That's why there's no back fence because this will be my fence one day. I'm hoping one day soon. They all did really good over the winter though. They all look really, really good. Okay, let's go in the garden. So clearly we don't have any arbors yet. We are kind of still deciding. I love the fence so much. I almost don't want to even plant anything that obscures any part of it. So I think I need to let the newness wear off and then decide if I want arbors um, along the openings. There are 12 beds in this garden. There are four three by four size beds and they're on e either end. So right here and on the far end, there are four three by sixes. There's potatoes planted in this one, Russell. Um, and then there are four L-shaped that are three foot on the sides and then six feet on the long parts. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna be planting something right here in the center. I was trying to decide if I wanted to do a fountain or a statue, but I think there's a lot of hard elements going on with the wood and the fence um, that I think I'm going to go with something planted, some kind of topiary, maybe even a boxwood in a very uh, tight like pyramid shape with lavender planted around the base of it because I want it to be soft. I don't want there to be too much of one thing going on. I also have four boxwoods placed on the interior of both of the shorter beds or all four of the shorter beds. I left them there because I'm not just not sure if I want to plant them straight in the ground or if I want them in pots, but I want them to be very tight spheres right there. I think that'd be a really neat thing to have inside the vegetable garden. As far as what I have planted, I'll go over that really quick with you guys. First of all, I have a whole flat sitting here. These are profusion deep apricot zinnias. I couldn't help it. They came into the garden center today and I just had to bring them home. I don't even know where they're going to go. Um, but I want to get more zinnias in my garden this year. This is a catch-all bed right here. I've got a couple spinach. There's a cauliflower, romaine lettuce, lemon thyme, rosemary, and walla walla onions. This bed is going to become my herb bed. I just had these left over from four packs and thought, well, I'll plant them, harvest them, and then I'll put more herbs in. Right here I have Ruby Perfection cabbage. This is a whole bed full of Italian garlic that's really doing really well. I've got Yukon gold potatoes in here, which we planted for you in a video. In this bed, there isn't a, well, there is quite a bit. There's five celery plants. There's one tomato. This is a sun sugar. So it's a really 
yummy cherry tomato that's kind of an orangey yellow color. Right here, I have three rows, like thick rows of uh, greens planted and they're just mixed greens and I wanna have them for baby greens so I planted them in wide bands. This bed, there's nothing. <laughs> Those are just for decoration to make it look like I have something going on. This bed, I have some gourmet lettuce, um, I think it's like gourmet lettuce blend is what it's called. So it's just a bunch of different kinds of lettuce looking super pretty. This is a Roma tomato here. Good for salsa, there's nothing here yet. In this bed, I have six rows of carrots. Most of them are Scarlet Nantes, I think. And then one row of the cute little round like Parisian carrots. This is a super fantastic tomato. I've got three rows of beets. Two of the rows are Detroit Supreme. One row is Touchstone Gold. And then I have two rows of radishes, but look, they're just coming up. Just peeking through the soil. I don't even like radishes, but I grow them every year because they're so dang fast. It's just something satisfying to grow. I'll give them to somebody who likes them. In this bed, I've got more garlic. There are three different varieties in here. Red toque, German red, and chesnock in this bed. And then we've got broccoli, which is a broccoli kale cross, which is also, it's starting to form heads in here, little broccoli heads. Broccoli plants, there's an English cucumber right underneath that dome. I don't know if you can see in there. And then I've got four cabbage plants in here. I should be able to remember what I plant, but I don't. Stonehead cabbage. So we're doing pretty good on spring crops. Um, I have all of the beds top dressed with just compost. It's gardener and bloom, it's baled compost. I just like the way it looks. It kind of just finishes everything off nice. Plus it's compost, so it adds good things to my soil. So whenever I'm working in it and it's kind of turning into the soil, I know that it, you know, my soil is being amended, which is really, really nice to know. So we are planning a ton of videos in this area for you guys, like a lot of planting videos, harvesting videos. We're gonna be setting up drip in all of these beds. We're actually planning on doing a three, I think it'll end up being a three part series of on irrigation, drip irrigation and like how to um, set up all your containers on it and your raised beds and um, your flower beds, that kind of thing. All of the beds in here have their own faucet in each corner. And we did that just, I probably wouldn't normally have done that except for we had to tear up this area anyway. So we decided to do that so I could individually control all of the beds. Um, like if I had something in one of the beds that didn't want as much water, I could turn that one off that day. Um, that sort of thing. It is so bright out here. <laughs> the sun is about to set. Um, so anyway, we will be doing a video about that to show you guys just how we're setting everything up. So that's pretty much it for the tour tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing the blooms and seeing how the vegetable garden is coming along. We still have a lot of work to do in a lot of different areas. Um, but you know, we're actually mulling over an idea and tell me what you guys think down in the comment section, but I love to look at other people's gardens and we love to figure out a way for you guys to take videos of your gardens and then submit them to us. And then we could share them on our channel somehow, like kind of have a series going where it's not just our garden, but it's other people's garden because we all get inspired from each other and we can all draw different ideas, even if it's one thing from somebody else's garden. So let me know what you think about that idea. If you think that would be something you would be interested in. So thank you guys so much for watching this one and we will see you in the next one.